Okay, hypothesis testing, chapter 10. Okay, so let's skip some of these things. Okay, a hypothesis test. So a statement, a hypothesis is a statement regarding a characteristic of one or more uh, populations. So in our case, that means like, uh, I say that the average income of El Camino College students is $13,500 a year. Uh, that's a hypothesis, it's a guess about a characteristic of, the pop of a particular population. Or I could say the average height of Americans is 5 feet 7 inches, whatever. Some sort of uh, hypothesis of one or more characteristic of a particular population. Okay. So we are going to focus in this, in this uh, chapter on a few characteristics that we've been working with. Proportions, P, means, mu, or standard deviations, sigma. These are the three main characteristics we've been focusing on in this class, and those are the ones that we're going to be working with. So here's some examples. In 2008, 62% of, uh, of American adults regularly volunteered their time for charity work. And a researcher now believes that this percentage is different today. Okay, so this was information we have from back in 2008. That is not in question. We know that to be true in 2008. Now we want to know what's happening in 2016. Is it still 62%? Is it a little higher? Is it a little lower? Right? We don't know the real answer, so we can make a guess. And that guess might be based on what we knew to be true back in 2008. Okay, so uh, that's one example. So according to a study published in March 2006, the mean length of a phone call uh, on a cellular telephone was 3.25 minutes. A research belie researcher believes that the mean length of the phone call has increased since then. Okay, so again, we know it to be true in 2006. It was 3.25 minutes long. But now it is different. We believe that perhaps it is longer today. Uh, in 2016, sorry, 10 years later, do you think it's shorter, do you think it's longer? So we're making a guess about 2016, and to some extent that's a little bit based or it's sort of centered on what we knew to be true back in 2006. But what's important to, to uh, not confuse is that there is no guessing about 2006. This is true in 2006. We're making a guess about 2016, okay? All right, uh, using an old manufacturing process, the standard deviation of, a, of the amount of wine put into a bottle was 0 0.23 ounces. With new equipment, the quality control manager believes that the standard deviation has decreased. Okay, so again, with the old equipment, we know it to be true that the standard deviation was 0 0.23 ounces. Um, but now that they've installed new equipment, uh, is it different? Is it, is it more accurate? Is it more precise, more consistent? Uh, is the standard deviation smaller, equal to what the old machine used to be, or maybe worse, right? Um, so these are the kinds of guesses that we're going to be working with. So we're going to work at hypothesis testing about a population proportion, hypothesis testing about a population mean, and hypothesis testing about a population standard deviation. Okay? Uh, we test these types of statements using sample data because it is usually impossible or impractical to gain access to the entire population. If population data uh, is available, there's no need for inferential statistics, right? So if I, if I could just uh, actually measure the heights of all Americans, I wouldn't need statistics. I would know for a fact what the exact average height is. I would just know it. There it is. There's no dispute about it, right? But it's impossible for me to actually find the exact height of all Americans, right? That's, you guys will agree that's impossible, right? There's 320 million people. What are we going to do? Go out and measure everybody? Um, we, 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 just the logistics of having to do that would be really difficult, right? Um, so we would rely on statistics. We're going to take a little sample from the population. We hope that sample is representative of the population. So we need that sample to have certain characteristics. We need it to be big enough, right? If it's too small, then it wouldn't be representative of the entire United States. If I just randomly picked three people and said, here they are, these are the three people representing all Americans, three people just isn't enough, right? So maybe if I picked 300 or 3,000 or 30,000, something that's large but manageable, something I can actually do, uh, that would be one characteristic, large enough. Uh, two, we need that a sample to be representative as far as 
racial um, backgrounds, maybe uh, regional uh, uh, separation. So we need it to be random so that we can uh, uh, have a better chance of having our sample truly be representative of the entire United States. Got it? Good, 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 good. Uh, all right, so a hypothesis test is a procedure based on sample evidence and probability uh, used to test statements regarding a characteristic of one or more population. So it's just a way of formalizing it. Okay, so we're going to go through this process of formalizing a hypothesis statement and how we test it and uh, how we make a determination as to whether or not we have enough evidence to support our hypothesis statement. Okay. So steps in the hypothesis testing. We're going to make a statement regarding the nature of a population. And again, we're going to narrow down the scope, right? Statistics is a really big world. We're just going to focus on a tiny little area of it. So we're only going to focus on uh, population proportions, population means, and population standard deviations. Okay. Next, we're going to collect data, right? We're going to go out into the world and get sample data. Well, in our case, every example we run into is just going to give it to us because we're not going to go out and find data. So the example will say, 10 people were surveyed. Here's the results that we got from those 10 people. So you're going to have to use your, your calculator to, to, to use that data to find the mean or the proportion or the standard deviation from that sample, whatever you might need for this particular case. Then we're going to analyze the data uh, to assess the plausibility of the statement. Does that make sense? Good? OK, so let's look at some, OK, well, uh, next, uh, some more language. The null hypothesis. When we make our uh, hypothesis statement, it's going to come in two forms. We're going to have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the, st uh, is the statement to be tested. The null hypothesis is the statement of no change, no effect, no difference. It is, uh, it is assumed to be true until we have uh, evidence to indicate otherwise. Okay, so it's, um, it's the status quo. It's what, uh, what it used to have been, right? So we'll, we'll see some examples in a second. But it's the boring hypothesis. It's the, it's the hypothesis statement that is assumed to be true. It's the statement that uh, maybe was perhaps true before, but now you think maybe it's different. Uh, so it's the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, uh, denoted by H sub 1 in this book, is a statement that we're trying to find evidence to support. That's the thing that you think is different from what it has always been. Okay, so we'll go into some examples in a second. The notation for it is H sub 0 and H sub 1. So here is um, an example of what we're going to be doing. So. Uh, we're going to be uh, working with uh, a case where we're uh, checking equal versus uh, not equal. So it's called the two-tail. So here's an example where we're saying a parameter is equal to something, like the population proportion equals some number, or the population proportion does not equal some number. Okay. Again, the, uh, the world of statistics is really big, so we're going to narrow down the scope of what we do. So for our case, we narrow down the way we write down our hypothesis statements. For one thing, we always, always have an equal sign in the null hypothesis. Okay? Always have an equal sign um, in the null hypothesis. Uh, and then there's, oh, this same number is always there, the, uh, some value. It's always the same sum value for the alternative and the null hypothesis. So this could be one case where we're saying it's different from what we started with. What, what the alternative hypothesis is just stating that the parameter is different. It's not the same. It's not equal to whatever that one was. The other case we're going to be working with is this one. It's called a left tail test. We'll see why they're called two tail and left tail in a little bit. Uh, so here again, we have that the parameter equals some number. Right? For us, we always work with the parameter equals some number. And then in this case, the alternative is that it is less than that, that same number. Okay, so this number is always the same in every case. Uh, but in this case, we have a less than. And then, of course, the last one is greater than. So uh, in every single case, uh, the null hypothesis is always the same. The parameter equals some constant number. Right? That's just because we're narrowing down the scope of what we do in this class. Otherwise, it would be too hard. 
the alternative hypothesis is always going to be uh, uh, going to follow one of these three formats. Either the parameter does not equal that number, the parameter is less than that number, or the parameter is greater than some number. Right? That's all we're working with. Notice that the inequalities are strict inequalities. They don't have a less than or equal to. So um, that, that's important. Good? Okay. Moving on. The null hypothesis is the statement of status quo or no difference and always contains the statement of equality for us. Right? It's just too difficult to work with anything else. So uh, we're going to work with just that. The, the null hypothesis has an equal statement and it equals some number. Okay. The null hypothesis is assumed to be true until we have evidence to the contrary. Okay. So uh, let's look at some examples. So let's go back to these examples that we had from a little bit ago. In 2008, 62% of American adults regularly volunteered their time for charity work. A researcher believes that the percentage is different today. Okay, so if we wanted to set that up as a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, first of all, you got to think about what kind of population uh, characteristic we're working with here. So this is a population proportion, mean, or standard deviation. Proportion. So this is a popu so working with P, population proportion. And so the null hypothesis is that the population proportion in 2016 is the same as it was back in 2008. The null hypothesis is the statement of no change. Everything is the same. Nothing has changed. We leave it in, in the same, uh, it's the same old boring answer we've had uh, from before. So the null hypothesis would be that the population proportion is equal to 62% in 2016. Not that we have any evidence of that yet. It might, have, it might be different today, uh, but that's going to be our null hypothesis. We're going to assume that to be true until you can show me evidence that it's different from that. Okay? So the alternative hypothesis falls under what the researcher believes. Right? A researcher believes that the percentage is different today. Different today means it could be bigger or it could be smaller. So this is a not equal to case. Yes? Right. So here it is. For example, uh, the null hypothesis is that P equals to 0 0.62, whereas the alternative hypothesis, piece one, is that P doesn't equal to 0 0.62. Good. Questions, comments, issues? No? No, 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 no? Okay, looking at the next one. According to a study published in March 2006, the mean length of a phone call on a cellular telephone was 3.25 minutes. A researcher believes that the mean length of a cellular phone call has increased since then. What would your guess be? What would your guess be? Do you think that 10 years later, in 2016, the average length of a cell phone telephone call is longer or is shorter? Shorter. 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 Okay, you guys all think it's shorter? Why do you think it's shorter? Because people don't use the phone, they don't call as much? Well, I think it's longer, and I think it's longer for the exact same reason you think it's shorter. Think about it. Remember the average phone call, right? In 2000, let's say before there was texting, or at least before it was popular, um, you had to make those phone calls, right? So back before texting, there was a lot of very short phone calls that were basically, you know, hey, I'm downstairs, come, come open the door, or, you know, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Get ready. You know, those little short phone calls have been replaced by texting, haven't they? So the average phone call is now longer because we're removing all the little phone calls away, all the short length phone calls. So now the only phone calls that we do make, they tend to be long, right? When's the last time you made a phone call that was super short? Like, hey, come open the door. And you know, it happens, but not as much. All those things you just rather text, you know, hey, I'll be there in 10 minutes or, you know, those little short, tiny little things. And all the thing that's left, the only things that are left, I don't know about you guys, the only time I ever call people on the phone is to call customer service for something, right? I can't think of the last time I really called a friend and said, hey, you know, let's go out to dinner or something. That just doesn't happen anymore, right? Do people still call, like, to ask someone out on a date? Is that, I think that's been lost on this generation completely, right? Anybody? Has anybody gotten a phone call from someone of the opposite, well, someone that is interested in you and, and then says, hey, let's, you know, let's go out to dinner or something. <laughs> Laughable? 
Wow, that just doesn't happen? Am I that old? Wow. You know what's really lost on this generation? Completely lost. I thought it was like a rite of passage for my, my people. Having to call a landline at home and have like their parents answer. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, is, is Becky home? Can I talk to Becky? Who are you? What do you want? Uh, I'm, I'm a friend. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's awkward. But that's completely lost now, right? Nobody does that. Um, any rate, so back to this. Because, uh, because I think all those short little phone calls are now lost, uh, we're left with just the long phone calls. Uh, and so I think the average length of a cellular phone call is probably long now, much longer than it was in 2006. Okay. So now writing it as a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, the null hypothesis is the boring statement, nothing has changed. That means that the population mean, mu, is 3.25. And the alternative hypothesis is based on what the researcher believes to be true, right? Um, and that it is longer. So the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 3.25. So there it is. Uh, so the null hypothesis is mu equals to 3.25, and the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 3.25. Good. Questions, comments, issues? No, 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 no? Okay. Um, and then the last one, using a null manufacturing process, the standard deviation of an equipment, um, uh, 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 manufacturing process, the standard deviation of the amount of wine put in a bottle was 0 0.23 ounces with new equipment. The quality control manager believes that the standard deviation has decreased. So in this case, the null hypothesis is that sigma is equal to 0 0.23. And the alternative hypothesis is that, um, that it has decreased. So the alternative hypothesis is that sigma is less than 0 0.23. Okay, so this one. Sigma equals 0 0.23. Alternative is that sigma is less than 0 0.23. Okay, so very important to remember in the null hypothesis, we're only working with three things in this class. It's either mean, it's either uh, population proportion or standard deviation. So narrow down the scope. It's easy to get lost when you're reading these word problems uh, because they're really hard, right? Especially when you're on a test and it's a weird word problem. You don't even know what's happening. So begin by focusing on whether they're talking about means, proportions, or populations. Next, remember that the null hypothesis uh, is always an equal statement. It's an equal statement based on what it has always been. Or the null hypothesis, the boring hypothesis, what everyone assumes to be true, that's the null hypothesis. The alternative is the radical new idea. It's the guess. It's something that you're trying to find evidence to support. Okay? Good, 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 good. Okay. So now uh, further adding to this, uh, we're going to look at two types of errors that occur when we make uh, hypothesis statements. The first type of error is called, um, so the first error is one, we reject the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. Uh, this, co uh, this co decision is correct, so this is an error. This is a, one of the results. So we reject the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. Uh, we, re we do not reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. This decision would also be correct. And then we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. This decision is incorrect. We call this a type 1 error. Uh, and then we call this a type 2 error. Here, let me 